You're still watching the City of Lagos TV show. In line with the themes agenda of Mr. Governor, Mr. Baba Yude Songulu, security is important and, of course, the safety of Lagosians, business environment, crisis management, emergency management, all in the bay to create the desired favorable economic environment for a greater Lagos. Today, we're going to be looking at the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency. What are the great plans the agency have in ensuring that emergency situations are properly managed and, of course, nipped in the board? This strategic agency is under the able leadership of the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Femi Oke Osoyitolu. Thank you, Doctor, for coming on the program. Good afternoon. There has been several collapsed buildings in the city of Lagos. We've had sketches of fire outbreaks. We've had life-threatening situations in the city. We want you to, as the permanent secretary of the agency, incident some of these cases, or most of them if you can, and what efforts were you able to uh, put in place to check this situation and, of course, manage them accordingly. To the good people of Lagos State, this administration of Mr. Babajide Olushola Songulu lives so much in giving back the dividends of democracy to our people. And safety of life and properties is paramount to this administration. All the key stakeholders that are important in managing of emergency today have been built up to a situation that their response time is 10 minutes and um, we are not relenting on our efforts we keep on overhauling rebuilding the structure in emergency stroke disaster management in lagos state and that is why that in lagos state they are now having a pamsec as the chief executive officer of lagos state emergency management agency the agency is saddled to coordinate any form of response to any form of emergency to disaster in the state. We have what we call incident command control chain in management of emergency in the state. We define the roles and responsibility of emergency management in legal states. And with that, must take responsibility for emergency stroke disaster management in the state. Let's quickly look at the life-threatening issues that you've been talking about. The building collapse. Under the watch of Mr. Governor, we've equipped the primary responders responding to emergency. We have overhauled both our primary health center and our secondary health system, including the tertiary health system. The most key in emergency management is information and communication. In each of the stakeholders, we are able to carry out what we call advocacy and a lot of stakeholders meeting. All these gear up in enlightening our people what they need to do and what they don't supposed to do. And one way or the other, we realize that emergencies, so disaster, are localized. So we build our resilience on the local level. Firstly, we establish what we call a call center, and the emergency number of the state is 767 and 112. So it means if there's an emergency in legal state, what you just need to do is to call us on our emergency number of the state. Easy way of doing business in legal states in terms of um, building permits, building code. We have engineers at the local government level. We have responsible, well-orientated building controlling agency. We have physical planning in place. With all what we put in place, why do we still have building collapse in legal states? The government of the day make it loud and clear that safety of life and properties is paramount. He has ruled out rules and regulations in place. The only thing is that our people need to abide with it. But our people are not abiding with these rules and regulations. One, what do you need to do before you erect a structure? 
you must have building plan approval. You must ensure that you did not employ a quack to assist you in building these houses. You must know the topography that you want to build these houses. You must not build a house to, to obstruct drainage system in your locality. Stop using a substandard materials. There is specificity for any building that you want to build. At every stage, we have our agency representative that are checking on this, that they will be giving you password. As you move from foundation, they will look at your foundation, ensure it's okay. When they approve three floors for you, you are now taking the place to 10th floor. Our position is clear that we are responsible for good people of the ghost state. So when we are doing enforcement too, we will go into your structure, we won't demolish, we won't do kind of reconstruction, we will mark the place and say, please go for solid material integrity. If it's failed, we will try and work with you how we need to adjust it. Our people will build at night, we move the paper, we put there. Our people will try to compromise the system and the fallout is what you are now seeing that we are experiencing could last building. There is what you call prevention strategy when it has to do with emergency management. What are the prevention measures taken? We have an agency the Building Controlling Agency. We have the Physical Planning and Urban Ministry. These are the agencies that have put rules and regulations on the ground. And they have their team at the grassroots level. They will always identify all these as a form of preventive method. They will ask the donor or the developer to subject their building to integrity tests. And some of these buildings are marked that look, they are not fit because what makes a building stand is the strength in that building. But when that one is defective, then you will see the bending, cracks on the structure. Then you will know that, oh, we have a, this building is about failing. But before we get there, we've put a lot of machinery in place. And interestingly, all what we are doing is under the watch of Mr. Governor. Mr. Governor always have regular meetings with all these key stakeholders. Sometimes when we respond to emergency, most of the time, Mr. Governor takes his time to look at our report holistically. So when you look at it, believe me, this government has been holistic in management of all this, in terms of the preventive aspect of it, in terms of responding to this. Our people need to change their attitude. How well equipped is LASEMA to withstand any form of emergency situation? LASEMA and its stakeholders in legal states are well prepared. In terms of communications, in terms of sophisticated equipment, we have it all. We have MOUs with both private organizations. The equipment that we don't have, we have a good rapport with the private organization, we can have assets. Treat. Most of emergency in Lagos State, we've carried out a lot of simulation exercises on it. By this June, we are going to launch sophisticated equipment in our fire services. Look at the way we have developed our fire services from the creation of, of the state from 1967 to 2022. You can see the marked development in our fire services when this administration came in. We have able to build fire service stations in different locations in Lagos State. We are able to equip them with sophisticated equipment. We are able to ensure that we employ a lot of personnel to the fire services. So come morning, afternoon, night, we will be ready to manage the golden hour concerning fire incidents in Lagos State. And all this spread on all over agencies that are responsible in managing emergency in Lagos State. Check the building controlling agency out. They have a lot of vehicles. They have a lot of personnel. They are under the watch of the Honorable Commissioner of Physical Planning. Now, before we could have effective and efficient response to any form of emergency, the 
planning aspect of it must be very good, which is what we are doing in Lagos State. We have we've done our risk analysis. We've built the capacity of our men that they can respond to any form of emergency. And the most beauty of it is that we are not relenting on what we are doing. At the 116th executive meeting of the state, they are, were able to approve five years plan of development for LASEMA, which means some of our officers will be trained locally, internationally. The position of Lagos State in terms of the uh, commercial value of Lagos State to Nigeria. We have two technical partners that are working for us. One is handling our information and data collection. One is handling how we need to improve on our equipment. So ours is just to manage the resources and men. So when there's any form of emergency, I will not disturb myself in maintaining my fleet. There are organizations that are ready to maintain it to optimal, which is different from civil service bureaucracy. So which means when emergencies occur, my duty is to deploy people in there to ensure that our response is not only swift, it's prompt and effective. What are the challenges LASEMA is facing? The major challenges that we are facing is the area boys. Why would we go and respond to some of the emergency? They will be blocking ways. They will be saying that before you can walk, you have to give them money. You are going for emergency. You don't want to cause another emergency. Another challenge is, is the way our people park their vehicles in an old way that they don't allow our heavy duty equipment to move there. Some of them even block the way by closing the gate around 8 o'clock. That when there's an emergency in their street, for us to get in there, they could have locked the, the gates to themselves. And most important thing, and highly disturbing, the way our people report emergency. You must report emergency in a proper way, and it must have decorum. It must have human feelings. It's not a situation that um, you'll be taking the pictures of a victim naked, and you'll be spreading it in social media. It's not a situation that people will just be escalating the figures. It's not a situation that you'll be saying, oh, uh, the emergency responders are not there, oh. No. If you want to know what is going on, it's either you go to, on internet, check where we are putting this in, or you ask the Honorable Commissioner of Special Duties, Honorable Commissioner of Information, and you ask our humble self. So information management in disaster management is very, very critical. With your recent appointment uh, as a permanent secretary of the agency, and with your vast wealth of experience in emergency management, what should Lagosians be expecting in the future? What the good people of legal states should be expecting is that we are going to have building capacity from the grassroots to the top. We will ensure that we produce as many as possible disaster managers in legal states. We will ensure that we have all the agency stakeholders well maintained. Ensure that in all our local government, we have emergency management there. In all our zone offices, we have good emergency managers there. I've been on this track for over 20 years. So my job now is to ensure we build capacity in terms of infrastructure, training of personnel, ensuring that we have a lot of people that want to be in emergency stroke disaster management field. So my appeal is to the good people of Lagos State, abide with our rules and regulations. Surely we are focused, we are disciplined, we are highly humble to manage the golden hour. We will get to our destination if we are able to work together as a team. Thank you very much, Dr. Femi Okeo Sonitolu, Permanent Secretary of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. I wish you all the best. The City of Lagos TV show will continue in a moment.